Hello, I'm the Reverend Dr. Tiki King, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about a very serious subject. Cocktails with Tiki King! Hey, I want to welcome you all to what is the first of hopefully a long-running internet series that will probably never be called the greatest show on earth, but we're going to give it a try. We're going to have some fun. We're going to make some cocktails, which is something I happen to know a little bit about. Um, and I'm going to hopefully share that knowledge with you, and we're going to have fun doing it. And uh, I'm going to drink, and you guys are going to follow along at home and make some of the drinks that I'm making. And if you can't remember how they go, it's all on my website. So, so there you go. Hey, I just want to say thanks for tuning in. I just want to say uh, thanks for tuning in, apparently, because I already said that. No. <laughs> Whoa. Um, so what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, this is a series that I thought would be fun to do because I like making cocktails. I like you guys who drink cocktails. I like making cocktails for you guys. So I'm going to show you how to make some of my favorite cocktails and tell you a little bit about them and where they come from and why I make them and what makes them delicious and that sort of thing. And hopefully uh, you guys will learn something if you're not careful. Um, so tonight we're going to start out with a drink that's near and dear to my liver. Um, it's called uh, the hot butter rum. And the reason that I like it so much is uh, there's a couple of reasons. One is because it's rum and two, because it's got rum. And I'll tell you, if I had to pick a third, it would probably still be rum. Um, this is a drink that I've probably been drinking since I was legally old enough to buy booze and drink it. Um, I have some great memories of sitting beside the fire at my house up here in the mountains uh, when I thought I was going to be an author writing the most horrendously uh, punctuated stories and drinking hot butter rum until I fell asleep by the fireside. And I'll tell you, it uh, left a, a lasting mark uh, on the fireplace because I actually left a mug up there one night and it burned through and broke. But that's another story for another time. Um, so tonight I'm going to show you how to make hot butter rum. Hot butter rum is a, is a drink that actually goes back, uh, I don't know, 1600s, 1700s. It's in the family of drinks they call toddies, which are hot beverages with alcohol in them. There's a whole bunch of them. There's uh, all sorts of different um, teas and coffees and uh, Irish coffee, which we'll be doing in another segment. Um, but hot butter rum, this is one that not everybody um, has had because it can be fairly extensive to make uh, homemade. You can certainly go down and buy batter down at the store. You can go into uh, most liquor aisles like in Safeway, and they'll have pre-made hot buttered rum batter. Um, but if you're going to go that far, just keep on going and go to the bar and have them make you one the real way because the stuff in the tub is, uh, is not good. and It's full of all kinds of weirdness. And you don't need that stuff because what it's actually made out of, uh, the ingredients are easy to find um, and fairly easy to put together. And it does take a little bit of time and maybe a little bit of preparation. Uh, but you're going to see that as we're going along. Um, so what is it? It's rum. It's butter, it's hot, it's sugar, um, but there's a little more to it than that. It's a, there's a, a way that I make it that I said I've developed over the years, and I'll tell you why I make it the way I do, and uh, hopefully that'll make sense. Why don't we get started? Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is about a half a cup of plain white sugar. Now, there's going to be a bunch of other stuff, so don't get excited, don't get impatient. First thing we're going to do is make vanilla sugar. Now, the way we do this so you have your white sugar, you have vanilla extract. There's all kinds of vanilla extracts on the market. You can, if you want to spend 20 bucks a bottle, you can get some nice Madagascar vanilla. If you want to spend a little bit less, you can get genuine vanilla extract that'll cost you about five bucks. Um, so what we want to do is half cup of sugar, put about a half teaspoon of vanilla extract into the sugar and stir that up real good because we want to fully integrate that because we're making vanilla flavored sugar. Now, the reason we're putting this in here first, this is going to be added to the rest of the mixture, but we want to get that vanilla in the sugar crystals. We want it to coat the sugar crystals before we introduce the fats because uh, the butter is the fat part. Um, and if you try and put the vanilla in later, it sits on top and uh, it doesn't, just doesn't quite do its thing. It's, it likes to be mixed up like me. It's like, a, you know, good drink, you mix up, it mixes you up. It's all kind of a symbiotic um, relationship. All righty, so we now have our vanilla sugar. Oh, that's lovely. It smells like a, mm, smells like making cookies. All right, so now we have vanilla sugar. Now the next thing that we have is brown sugar, which I have here in this bowl. Um, oh, and I 
should probably tell you, this is not going to make one. This is going to make like 10 or more. Um, the reason we make 10 or more when we're making hot buttered rum is very simple. Um, there, there's two, actually two reasons. One, you might want to drink a whole lot of it, and it's better to have it on hand because after the first one, you might get sloppy. So you want to you want to get everything made right the first time. Also, you're probably going to want to have friends over. You might want to make this at a, your holiday party, maybe at Christmas time where you make hot buttered rums. So you make up a big batch because uh, it's easier than making them one at a time. Because like I said, once again, you guys get one round down and then people are just going to be throwing butter around the kitchen. It's going to be mayhem. There's going to be sugar on the floor. So let's make it all, all one batch right in the beginning. So uh, in here, we have about a cup and a half of dark brown sugar. Um, you can use light brown sugar, but uh, the dark brown has a more molasses flavor, which actually works really well with the rum, rum being a sugar-based drink um, or a sugar-based uh, alcohol, um, especially dark rums, which we're going to be using. Um, but uh, dark brown sugar, vanilla sugar, which we just made, put that together. Get that one mixed up in there. So, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tiki King, are we going to go get dinner or something after this? No. Um, you're thinking, okay, so I get it. You know, sugar, water, rum. It's basically a sling. It's, it's you know, it's an old drink. Why, why, why butter? Why would you do that? And I'll tell you, it's simple. It adds a couple of things. One is that the uh, fats add a lot of what you call mouthfeel. It gives it a really velvety texture when you're drinking it. Um, and also, hot buttered rum, like a lot of the toddy-based drinks, the hot beverages, were made to, to sort of brace you from the cold. You know, you might be out there, and it's wintertime, and it's snowing and raining and raining snow, and there's, like, sleet in between, and people are screaming, and the cat wants in, and, you know, it's like it's cold. And you're... You, you want something that's going to brace you, warm you from the inside out. Um, but also the, the, the fats in the butter um, help add just a little bit of energy. So it adds a little pick-me-up to it. So, all right, we have our two sugars, which are now fully integrated. Now we have one cube of softened butter. You want it not to be melted, but you want it soft enough to easily mix in your mixture here. Like I said, we're making a batch that's going to feed like 10. So there's a whole cube there. And then that has to just be, I'm playing pachinko back here apparently. I don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, like I said, I used to, uh, I liked hot buttered rum so much in my youth, I would hitchhike into town to get a bottle of rum go home. Sometimes, you know, wintertime, the power would be out. The beauty of it is you could stick the kettle on top of the fireplace and warm up the water. And this batter, like I said, the, they, they call it batter. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's not really a, a batter. It's more of like a, I don't know, greasy sugar concoction. Um, but they call it hot buttered rum batter. The batter will actually keep a long time. You can put it in a um, like a Tupperware container in your refrigerator, and you can literally, you know, if you make, if you're, you know, one of those people who lives alone and drinks alone and cries in your rum, um, you can make a batch of this and just have it in your fridge waiting for that proper moment, and it will be your friend in those times of need. You just pull that out, make yourself a hot buttered rum, watch the fire, Put the fire out if it's not supposed to be on fire. Have yourself a good time. So we got that. It's almost that's almost ready. So once again, I'm glad that you're all here. I'm glad you could join me tonight. It's uh, actually a nice night, but it is cold out, which is which is perfect for this drink. Um, okay, that's looking. Looking good. So you want this fully integrated. You don't want too much marbling. A little bit of butter, you know, marbling here and there is okay. Um, but you, I don't know if you can see it there. It almost looks like like chocolate chip cookie dough or something. Um, so there we go. 
So that's our sugar mixture. Now we're going to add one more thing to it. Um, typically, uh, if you look at most hot buttered rum recipes, they're going to call for cinnamon, nutmeg, ground cloves, and allspice are the, the most common um, that it calls for. But what I like to use, and this goes back to, like I said, I've developed a recipe over the years and found that what's more to my liking is uh, I use Chinese five spice. And I'll tell you why. Um, because it's good. It's just, it, it smells like it's like it's like if Thanksgiving and Christmas got together and had some kind of weird baby that looked like a turkey in a sand hat. Um, so Chinese five spice. It's uh, basically what it is is oh, actually I'll read the actual ingredients here. Uh, anise, cinnamon, star anise, cloves, ginger. So it doesn't have the nutmeg, but that's okay because I have some here. Um, so Chinese five spice, you can find it in the spice aisle of most stores. It's, uh, it's, it's fairly typical. And it's also, it's that thing in Chinese food that you're like, that's good, but I don't know what it is. Chinese five spice. So what we're going to want in here is probably eh, a quarter of a teaspoon thereabouts. And what that's going to do is give just a little nuance of, uh, especially like I said, the most recipes don't call for cloves, but I find that the cloves, in the five spice are subtle enough that uh, it doesn't overpower it, but it adds that certain certain special something. So, the, as the French say, the, the je ne sais quoi. I don't know what that is. So, um, so that's mixed up in there. Now, the other thing we need, which is the hot, we have buttered. We have hot. We're doing this, I guess, in the wrong order. Uh, you want to use boiling water. Now, this mug, this is actually called an Irish coffee mug. Um, it's made to withstand hot liquids. Uh, it's got the handle so you don't burn your fingers uh, or pick it up wrong and throw it on your guests, scalding them and causing them to leave, taking their presence with them. Um, and it has a foot on the bottom so you don't really need a coaster because it doesn't transfer the heat or the condensation. So. Here we have our Irish coffee mug. It's filled about uh, two thirds with boiled water. We're gonna put the, what we're going to want to do is put, um, here's the thing is this part is not all that crucial, but I put in basically two heaping teaspoons of this mix. And you can adjust that. You can, if you taste it and go, mm, more, you can put more in. You can't take more out. Uh, but you could add, I guess, more hot water. So, uh, that in there, and you can see the butter forming a nice little, nice little layer on the top there. Right. So now rum. When making hot butter rum, you can use just whatever you happen to have, uh, but I recommend using dark rum, uh, a nice dark aged rum, uh, because we're using brown sugar, which has molasses. We're using the vanilla, which is a. Uh, th these are all. Um, velvety textured flavors, if that makes sense to you. Um, so we want a nice dark rum to, to accent that without overpowering it. Um, there's a lot of different dark rums on the market. Uh, the Añejos tend to be uh, a bit too, um, have a bit too much character as a mixer. Um, with apologies to Mr. Martin Kate, I'm going to use Bacardi Dark because I like it. Um, but so he would probably tell me to use Myers or something that's a bit has a bit more tooth to it, maybe a bit more molasses. Uh, but I think this is th this is going to work fine for this because it's a uh, smooth drinking rum. And this is the Bacardi Black you can use, uh, the Bacardi Special. Um, I would stay, like I said, with the darks. Bacardi Gold, it's okay, but it needs just a hair more character than that. Um, so what we're going to do is, excuse me while I go down in the basement. There it is. Um, so to this, we're going to add two ounces of dark rum. Now, if I made this right, and you're really quiet, you can almost hear Turk salivating out there in the internet. <laughs> um, anyway. So there it is. Um, you might want to put in a, a 
non-melting stir stick, like this flamingo, which is probably totally inappropriate, but it's what I happen to have back here. Um, now the enjoyment part is going to be, there we go. Now we're going to see if I did this right. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. <sighs> Takes me back, I'll tell you. <sighs> that's good. <sighs> well, here's to you guys. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Um, this recipe can be found on my website at tkking.com in Tiki King's cocktail database. We're going to be doing this show weekly on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. I'll be posting each one. Uh, there will be live ones spread out here and there. Some other ones will be pre-recorded. That's okay because I'll be here. You'll be here. We'll all be here together separately, but having good cocktails. And I just want to say good night and good drinking. <laughs>